In 2008, I took a trip with my mother and we ended up in Morocco. Me meditating in the desert. Little did I know at that time that I was conspiring with the universe, but I had no idea. So shortly thereafter, when I returned back home in 2009, yeah, I bet you all can relate, I decided to quit my nine to five. I had a lot of drama and trauma happening in my life that kind of came to a head and I had some serious, serious thinking to do and an indulgent lifestyle to possibly give up. So I got together with one of my longest girlfriends and we planned a trip for a month and we began our trip in Paris. And funny enough, she said to me, knowing me forever, I'm afraid you're gonna meet someone when we go on this trip together. Guess what? The universe heard and delivered. That night we landed in Paris, we traveled around, I ended up in front of the Moulin Rouge, lots of tourists, and typical me, I caught the eye of a young handsome man, gave him a wink, went up and was really obvious and took his picture and the rest was history. I did continue on that one month trip with my girlfriend. However, when I told my mother and my family that this man wanted to marry me, like any mother, she kind of flew over to Paris, <laughs> right? And she drilled my future husband with 20 or more questions. He passed the test and we all became fast friends. And then our life did go into high gear. We had to get real serious, real fast. I wanted him to immigrate to Canada with me. So we had a formal engagement party in Paris. And then we had to pack up and go back on another trip to his hometown, which he had not been to for eight years. So here I am embracing a very different culture for the first time in my life in a small village in the Nile Delta in Egypt. So that's me embracing. I think I look pretty happy there pretty excited, and I really didn't know what to expect. Family came and joined, and we actually had a traditional wedding in that same village, and I was happy to know that I didn't have to plan any of this wedding. All I had to do was show up, which I did, and I at least got to pick my dress, which was pretty cool. So in, in Retrospect, it, it was great. But then what happened when all of the planning was done and we moved back to Canada was I kind of collapsed and I suffered from chronic pain. And so I then took the next six years of my life to discover what was going on and to heal myself. So here's the thing, that word stress, I think we're all pretty much acquainted with that word. And it's part of our everyday vocabulary, and I'm pretty confident to say that I bet it shows up in your conversations at least once a day, every single day. We know the word, but I don't think we really know what actually happens to our body. So here's the amygdala in our brain. This is going to be very, very basic. But this guy, also known as our guard dog, it decides if a situation, a person, or a place is an actual threat to our survival, and then it will do one of two things. It will kick in to the fight or flight response, right? Our heart rate increases, our pupils dilate, our blood no longer flows to our reproductive and our digestive systems. So we fight, we flight, or we actually freeze in order to survive from that situation. When we're not in the stress response reacting, we're in this lovely, beautiful uh, rest and digest state, right? The heart is at a beautiful, normal rate, the pupils are not dilated, and our blood is flowing to all of our vital organs so we can be at ease and at peace. This is where we wanna be every day. So, the nervous system. We have the sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight or flight, right? And then we also have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is that rest and digest. And throughout our day, every day, our body is actually switching back and forth between these two states. And here's the thing, in our society today, we are all probably suffering from chronic low-level stress. We're managing multiple responsibilities, families, um, lots of engagement, lots of activity. 
but we don't have a tool to help bring us back down to that rest and digest. So when we're in that high response state, our body is releasing cortisol. When we have excess cortisol in our bodies, guess what happens? Depression, heart disease, diabetes, weight gain, hostility, anger, the list goes on and on and on. So what I learned was I was suffering from this. And so my journey took me into discovering ancient tools and techniques like Qigong and also meditation that would help to trick my brain back into the rest and digest state so I can alleviate chronic pain. And I did. I'm completely pain free. These are my nieces and nephews, some of them in Egypt. So here's a great breath that I want to try with all of you. It's called the 557. We inhale for five, you hold your breath for five, and you exhale for seven. You do 10 rounds of this breath. It's just under three minutes, which I'm pretty sure we all have that time. And that tricks the body into the rest and digest state. So let's, I want you to do it together with me, okay? Are you ready? Let's inhale, one, two, three, four, five, Hold, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Easy. So I want you to remember that whenever you're experiencing any stress response in your day, all you need to do is just breathe. Thank you.